Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Charlie Panky, Sierra Rec Magazine, uh, Sierra Rec Now podcast. Thank you for joining us again this week uh, here on the podcast. Uh, glad to be joining you. I hope the Sierra is within your sights or is in your near future. Uh, we sure have been enjoyed bringing this to you all uh, the course of the year in our Out of the Mind series of the Sierra. Uh, a little different format today than maybe you've seen the last uh, 13 weeks or so. Well, we all have no guests today. Um, I'm going to just give you kind of a, a summer summer update recap today and uh, cover a couple of other things. We're going to cover our, our time at the BAM Trail uh, Bass Tournament in Lake Almer this last week. Uh, we'll talk about a little Lassen Volcanic National Park adventure I did. Um, obviously, throw some... Uh, Throw some love out to our one of our sponsors and a, a host up in Lassen, uh, St. Bernard Lodge along the way. I'm also going to jump back to two weeks ago where we did a, a brand new adventure up by Pinecrest Lake today. And we'll talk about Cleo's Bath and uh, the, uh, the trip that that was. It's such a, such a great trip. Uh, and then we'll uh, kind of give you a preview of what's coming up in the summer. Our 10th anniversary is kicking off this summer, and uh, we have a bunch of stuff coming, coming up for you. So we want to give you kind of a preview of that. Uh, and then give you an opportunity to, to respond in our YouTube channel and, and podcast. Let us know some of the things that you want us to cover uh, for the rainy summer. So buckle up. we got about uh, 25, 30 minutes of me. Hopefully that's okay. Uh, but it will be all Sierra. So it'll be all things that you love. And it'll be just some great, uh, great time together. So uh, thank you for joining me again today. So to get us started today, I want to do just a quick recap, if you will. I just got it back from four days spending in Chester, uh, California, Lake Almanor. Um, I was invited up there by the uh, Plumas County Tourism Association uh, to um, be there to uh, cover the BAM Trail Professional Bass Tour Tournament that they had on Lake Almanor this last week. Uh, they also had a Maidu um, called Big Time Logging Jamboree on Saturday. Uh, and then I work with St. Bernard Lodge and, and Plumas County all the time in Lassa Volcanic National Park is one of those areas that I highlight as much as I can for uh, outdoor adventure trips. And that's kind of what our channel is all about, right? So uh, we kind of made it a, a encompassing four-day event where we're going to be building a bunch of content for them on, on that event. But I want to talk about that and the experience I had at Lake Almanor and the community um, was, was a great weekend. I'm exhausted. It was a lot of hours. Um, but overall... Lake Almanor is just one of those places that's kind of untapped, if you will, as far as lake vacation opportunities in the state of California, in my opinion. So we're going to dive into that a little bit uh, and talk about that. So what is the BAM Trail? Uh, that may be a brand new term that you, to you, and, and for good reason. It's the first year. It's an it's inaugural season. It's the uh, professional bass uh, tournament circuit for Bass Angler Magazine who owns the BAM Trail. And BAM Trail actually has several different layers to it. It has a kayak series, it has a pro-am series, and they bass fish all over the West. But their pro circuit is 30 of the best invite-only professional bass fishermen across the West. So we had fishermen from Mesa, Arizona, uh, Tigard, Oregon, um, uh, Weezer, Idaho, uh, several throughout the Sierra, Angels Camp Sierra, Folsom, uh, the lo local homegrown talent, Lake Almanor, Mark Pilgrim was up there. Uh, but these are guys who are the best in the world, came in to Chester on Thursday night, uh, just before, just after Memorial Day weekend. And they showed up with their boats and their trucks and their wraps and their sponsors. Um, and this was my first time ever kind of being in this type of environment, right? So we pulled into the Sporting Goods store right next to the theater there in Main Drag in Chester. Uh, and if you're not familiar with where Chester and Lake Almanor are, it's about two hours north of Reno, um, up or up north of Truckee on Highway 89, if you do that. Or if you're coming in from Redding or Red Bluff, it's about an hour, hour and a half, maybe drive uh, in from those cities, uh, Chico area uh, from the five. So it's in that northern California, you know, eastern side of the state. Uh, and Lake Almanor is one of the biggest bodies of freshwater uh, and it's well known for its rainbow trout, its brown trout, huge populations, a massive record rainbow trout. Um, and it's also a fishery for smallmouth bass. So it's a very well stocked and run bass and trout lake uh, with lots of rivers coming in from different different directions. So it's a beautiful lake, clear, clear water. Um, it was 65 degrees, 66 degrees in the water the weekend. Very easy to swim. It was nice. Remember, so I started Thursday on my trip. It's about a two and a half hour drive from my home office here. 
and I stopped first because it's going to be early. So I got a paddle board from Outdoor Masters, and I've never paddled board before. So it was my first trip or try on the lake with a paddle board. And so I found a, a beach on the uh, west side of the lake uh, near P uh, Sierra Pines Resort. And uh, I got my paddle board all pumped up. They sent me a nice little uh, you know, motorized pump that got it bumped up a lot faster for me and a few extra manual pumps. I just as only get a little, make sure it was hard enough for my body size and, uh, standing up did not go well. I'm just going to tell you right now, I fell off several times, never could stay on for more about 10 seconds standing up. I got to work on that core strength, that center of balance, I guess. thought I was pretty centered and grounded, but a little heavy probably. Uh, but, uh, fell off. So got on my knees, knees were great. I was really shocked at how much core strength it takes, even on your knees, to just keep the paddle going. I was able to go several hundred yards, turn around, come back, get my camera, et cetera. And I've got some video I'll be putting out later on that paddleboard experience. Uh, it was quite unique. Uh, if I was better at this podcast, I'd probably be able to zoom that in right now, but I, I don't have that for you today. I apologize. I have to check it out the, on, our, on our YouTube channel or the Sea magazine. Uh, after that, we went, and so we drive into Chester, and, and there's boats everywhere. There's 30 professionals. These boats are, the best of the world. They're, they're it's very expensive boats, somewhere around eighty thousand dollars plus for these boats at base models. Um, and these guys are just regular guys. Most of them have full time jobs at Fisherman's Warehouse or their guide services or wherever they're working, and they get off from their companies, construction companies, because they're really good at this bass fishing. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, but they just get a meet and greet, let the, let the community come down. And if you don't know anything about Chester and Plumas County, they love their community events. They love to support local business. They come down and meet. It's kind of how they get together as families because they're pretty rural. So they don't have, you know, tight neighborhoods where everybody lives next to each other. Sometimes they're 10 miles apart or across the forest from each other, right? So they're, they're down there with the kids. The kids are excited. These guys... These bass fishermen can't wait to get on Lake Almanor. Uh, there was an apex tournament here last year. Uh, the lake was pretty rough. They had an earthquake. There was all kinds of things that were that were going on. And uh, there, they, as I was talking to fishermen I was meeting, they, they couldn't wait to get in the water. For one reason, because the BAM Trail, and that's what the tournament's called, the BAMtrail.com, you want to check it out. Uh, they're very unique. The BAM Trail does not allow the fishermen on the lake for 31 days prior to the event. So they're not allowed to get on the lake and they're not allowed to stay in the local community and talk to people about what's going on in the lake. So, for example, local Mark, Mark, local Mark Pilgrim, who runs a guide service on the lake, had to shut it down for 31 days and not talk to locals about what was going on in the lake. And it ended up to be in a very uh, fascinating uh, uh, element of the weekend because the lake was going through a transition and the bass were not spawning like they thought they might be. They just finished their spawn, kind of like a post-spawn, which I didn't understand bass fishing. So that changed the entire experience for these bass fishermen. And so Thursday night was great. They all got kicked off, but I just said that the, the anticipation was there. So uh, these things kick off early at five o'clock in the morning. We're at the pier down on the peninsula in the Lake, ha Lake Almanor community section down by the country club. And, uh, you know, you know, there was a lot of people running around. It's kind of crazy. These guys all show up with their trailers and they kind of took over the area. Um, but it was really cool. The, the, the Bass Angular Magazine guys, um, uh, they had introduced a, a new new director uh, the night before. So Michael Bray took over as a director there. Um, young, younger guy, but just full of energy and love for bass fishing. And uh, um, Mark Lassane, who is the, the original uh, owner or director of the program, He's still there running the whole thing, but he just feels more comfortable be, being behind the scenes and running the media and the TV show. They got a whole YouTube channel, everything, so you can check them out, bamtrail.com on that. But uh, so they kick off. They have a, a guy with a steel guitar. I think his name was Andy. Went out there. He's from uh, the Santa Rosa area, I believe, Sonoma County. And uh, he was out there just jamming and playing the, the national anthem. And the guy just couldn't wait to get in the water. So what's interesting about Brass Turner is that I came from media. I got to take all kinds of cool pictures and sunrises and stuff, but then they leave. And then what do you do the rest of the day? They, they're back. They leave by six and they're not back till three for weigh in. So, you know, Lake Almer is a beautiful drive. You've never been up there. There's a road that goes all the way around it. And so that's what I did. I took off from the lake and, you know, stopped along the road. Every time I'd see a boat near the shore, I'd stop and take some pictures. And the scenery is gorgeous. Um, a lot of people think Lake Almer all burnt down. Uh, Dixie Fire came through there 
a few years back and and true there's a lot of burn scar in the area okay last national park like 70 percent of the park is burnt right so there's a lot of burn scar but that's three years ago so that and even the burn scar there's a lot of growth i saw meadows of yellow flowers inside burnt trees this week it was just incredible pictures right beautiful 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 but on the west the east side of the lake that forest is still pristine gorgeous big huge trees great communities drive through so i kept on stopping seeing fishermen but the fishermen guys i was talking to instantly were telling me hey this is going to be a little bit slow is these fish are not just like grabbing bait right out of the water which sometimes they're used to sometimes they're usually just like you know pulling them like candy canes off the christmas tree right it's a, that easy for them sometimes but this this was not going to be the case uh, lake almond was already showing signs that this could be a little interesting for these guys so Long story short, I followed around state, the, the lake. I got several photos, got several great photos I'll, I'll be showing on uh, SierraMagazine.com of the lake. But stopped at Lola's for breakfast. If you've never been to Chester, Lola's Dynamite Place for breakfast. Had a little French toast, eggs, bacon. Great service, great time there. Uh, so highly recommend Lola's there. Uh, but, you know, I, uh, I didn't have plans for the afternoon, so I was able to hop back onto the lake with Mark uh, Lassane. He grabbed me. Um, and said, "Hey, I'll take you out, and we'll we'll shoot some shoot some water shots." But I really appreciate it because I'm just I'm the not a competitive media, but I'm another media guy. They didn't have owe me anything, uh, but I was the only media guy that seemed to be there all weekend long. So they they treated me right. I really shout out to them guys, Bass Angler Magazine. They have a great product if you like area into fishing and stuff. But they let me go out and take some pictures of the guys on the water, which is cool to see the technique and the different styles, and just hear from the 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 pros out there, right? And it was really interesting. You got this mix of, of anglers, 30 of the best in the, uh, in the West, right? Some of them are really struggling. Man, the, it was not doing what they're doing. They're just testing waters, testing everything. You have three or four different poles with different type of lures on there. They're throwing them out there. And then we run into some guys who had already had 11, 12, 15 fish that they've caught. And if you don't know how the bass boats and, and the tournaments work, they can only have five live fish on the boat at the same time. But how these tournaments work is they catch these fish and they have a, a like a 20 inch yellow tray that has the inch marks on it. And the rules of the tournament, they had to be a 14 inch fish or, or larger. So they put it down, they put their fish down, measure it, and they put their little tag there so they can identify what day it is. And they would just send a picture through this thing called Tourney X, which kept track of the tournament the whole time. Uh, so you could kind of track midday, you know, once they, people start uploading all their data because they're out in the middle of the lake, the data's a little slow. But you start to get an idea that, hey, there's a group that they have 10, 11, 12, 15 fish in their boat, and there's some guys that still only have two. So there's a big separation already happened the first day. I'm going to fast forward this real quick to the end of the first day, uh, and th that's exactly what we heard from the, the fishermen that Lake Almanor was – it was putting up a fight, man. It was, uh, it was not exactly what everybody expected. Uh, some people found some beds, some people found some fish and got, got them in. Other people were just all day long testing and trying to seek out what these fish might do. do. So, uh, first day came in, went, second day came in. Um, and, uh, the, um, uh, the group that was in the lead the first day, uh, kind of continued the second day, except for the guy that I think the lead dropped off a little bit. I'm looking for some results here. I, I, uh, didn't pull the head of time. Apologize. Um, I want to be able to share those with you, but they um, they they went out again second day, same thing, five a.m. Boom, uh, and they're gone. And so what I did on the second day, because this is my you know kind of my whole weekend here, is I had a, had a full Saturday schedule, and it was going to be a little warmer, um, and in we weren't sure what the fishing is going to be like anyway. So I said instead of me going on the boat this time, I uh, I packed up my bag and I I drove out. Um, out to Lassen Volcanic National Park, the northeast corner. And if you've ever been out to the Cinder Cone or to Butte Lake, that's where I was going, right? It's down a seven-mile dirt road. Um, if you're leaving from the the kind of Westwood Chester area, right in the middle, there's a route that cuts across. And it goes right next to the edge of Caribou Wilderness, which, again, this is another section of forest that wasn't burnt. Uh, it's very pretty drive. Lots of deer and wildlife in this area. Great little drive up up there. And then you get to the backside, um, the road that heads off to Shasta. Uh, you, you just kind of go through all these meadows and lakes and everything. And then you kind of reach this road, this dirt road, seven miles back into Butte Lake. And Butte Lake is a really pretty lake. Very few visitors. Two big campgrounds back there. Um, and I've never seen more than maybe four or five cars at a time back there and a few campers. So it's 
really a, a great area to go to part of the park wise as far as nobody there uh lake swimmable you can put paddle boards in it kayaks in it um uh, i don't believe there's motorized boats of it allowed and i think it's a lava bed that flows right up to the water and there's little lava islands all over but my goal today was to, to hike around not to go to the center because i've done that before is hike around the lake uh to the east side and hike up to a lake called the widow lake which is about 3.6 miles uh relatively easy i'd say easy to moderate hike moderate because the last Last 500 yards or so, it's straight uphill. It's pretty pretty strenuous, so you got a lot of stopping. Um, this hike's a little interesting because Butte Lake's gorgeous. You get up over and you get to the backside, and there's you see your first fire da- uh, damage. And right along the lake shore, the first part that there's it's not bad fire. It's like ground fire. It didn't cover, it killed all the trees. It just kind of there's fire signs. But when you get to the very back of the lake, there's definitely an area where the fire kind of gutted it. Right, they're, they're, all the trees are dead. But again, like I said, this is three years ago now. So this meadow has come back to life. There's green flowers, water, wildlife everywhere. And so it's a really cool hike. And so right after you get to the end of the lake, you probably walk maybe, I don't know, maybe a half mile more and uh, where the trail stays pretty good. But again, now the meadow has taken over the trail a little bit. So as it, just as you're starting to go up to Whittle Lake, uh, if you ever get a chance to go do the experience, which I highly recommend, by the way, there's a great view I'm going to tell you about in a minute here. Um, the trail's going to get a little hard to follow. They haven't cleaned it up yet. They're kind of doing it, but it's pretty easy to just kind of follow the creek bed. And if you have a map, you know, it kind of goes off a little bit southeast. Um, so you're going to follow up and then you're climb the mountain into this really cool volcanic boulder field. Uh, it's the only way I can explain to it. They're just these large, round boulders if we were in the sierra further we'd call them these big granite granite balls but these are definitely more of a lava rock granite mix it's a it's a cool a cooling effect almost made, like it made a dam on a river that's probably how widow lake maybe eventually you know eventually was a, a made is i have a feeling a river came through there and this volcanic bubble popped all these boulders out i'm not a geologist so i might be wrong here but it's a big enough area that that's that could be what happened it dammed up that lake and built that lake up there uh Widow Lake right now, unfortunately, the fire devastated it. There's not a live tree up there. It just completely burnt trees. So it's probably not the prettiest lake in the world, right? It was a nice hike. It was a beautiful place to go hiking to. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Mostly because when you turn around at the lake, just before you, as you get to the top, turn around, the, because of the burn scar, all the big, big, huge trees that used to block your view of Lassen Peak are gone. At least the top so far. So now there's this massive view of Lassen Peak right in your window. It's actually one of the most stunning sights I saw all weekend. I saw a lot of great shots, but it was really one of the, the premier places. The other thing cool there is the river is like underneath the rocks. So you're sitting in the rocks and the river's underneath you. So you're not really seeing a full effect of the river, uh, but it's got the kind of nice bubbling sound. So it was a great place to have lunch. Did see a big bear track up there, so there are bears in the area, um, but I didn't see him live on that. So, uh, long story short, finished that hike, got got back to the car, and then uh, the town of Chester and the uh, Maidu Indian tribe up there was having the big time loggers jamboree, and so we ran into um, Chester after that. It's about forty five minute drive from uh, Butte Lake back into town. And I was hungry, uh, and I knew this would be food at. So when it, the, the, the logger jamboree reminded me of my, being a small kid. My dad was a logger. Uh, I was used to small town, little festivals and communities. Chester's always put them on. I've been to Chili Feeds there before, and uh, they have car events and you know, all different things up there. But uh, it's a place where the, the whole community comes together, right? So the whole community's coming out. The kids are out. The, the, the grandparents are out. The families are out. And there's just chainsaws, axes and saws running everywhere for the, you know, in this little competition area, right? We got to see guys throwing axes at beer cans and you got chainsaw speed competitions and you get girls versus guys on the saws. It was, it was a lot of fun. They're all being timed events, but the whole idea is the Maidu Indians. It, that's where this is their, their land originally. Right. So uh, they, they're big, um, big logging history in the, in the tribe and, and management of the land. And they still believe in preserving and managing the land. They work with the County a lot up there. There's a pretty good relationship, I believe working with all the people up there. So it was kind of a, a, a way for them to celebrate their heritage, but also talk about logging and, and preservation and that role it, it has in preventing things like the Dixie fire, which were just out of control, right? So uh, a really cool event. There were hundreds and hundreds of people there. Got some great photos. Check those out. They're actually already on my Facebook page and, and on the website, sierracmagazine.com. But uh, that 
that was a fun event. And then it was all, and then it's three o'clock. It's time to be back at the lake for the weigh-in. And, and this is a big day on Saturday because if, you know, they, on Sunday, the only the top 10 get to go on the lake, right? So only the top 10 guys in the big bam, yeah, you know, get to go on the lake on uh, a Sunday. So everybody's kind of anticipating, okay, this is going to be a big deal, right? This is, you know, let's see where it's at, especially is local Mark Pilgrim going to make the finals, which by the way, uh, coming in, uh, into day one, he was in third place. So he had a good first day. So on day two comes in way in, and here's what your top 10 were. Mark Pilgrim ended up first for after day one. He had a total weight of 32 pounds after two days and 18 keepers he caught after two day total. Uh, Ish Monroe, uh, came in with 30 pounds and he had 21 keepers. Conrad Dem- uh, Damascus, uh, 31 pounds, 17 keepers. Jake Boomer, uh, 27 pounds, 21 keepers. Cody Pearson, 30 pounds, 19 keepers. Luke Johns, 29, 31, and 18 keepers. Nick Wood at 28, 96. Zach Thompson, 27, 72. Hayden Lee out of um, Angels Camp, uh, 27, 81, 11 keepers. And Nicholas uh, Clowder at 27 pounds and 15 keepers. So that was your top 10. The rest of the guys, they they went home, most of them. A couple of them stick around just to watch on, on Sunday. But that was a day's event, um, and that was that was crazy, right? That was just a, a lot of fun. There was a lot of emotion to it. Um, uh, the other thing I, I got to do, uh, with my free time there is I got to go golfing at the Lake Almond or community golf club up there, uh, which was just stunningly beautiful. These huge old growth cedars and uh, sugar pines on the course, really fun course to play. Uh, it's only nine holes, but if you're, you get it, it's invite only. So you have to get an invite to it. Uh, but uh, a great opportunity to golf there too. I was doing that, but that, so they're top 10. So Sunday comes around and now we're talking about the main event because Sunday, Every one of these guys get cash. The winner took home $15,000. The, the last place of the 10 gets $2,000, right? And just so you know, these guys pay money to get in these tournaments. So they pay two th- almost $2,000 to get into the tournament. Um, but it's all funded by sponsors and different things. And they, this TV deal that uh, <clears throat> the, the BAM guys are they're running on YouTube and stuff. But uh, the weather was going to be crazy. They had another earthquake Sunday morning, a really shallow one at 4.30 in the morning, and they didn't know how that was going to affect things. I guess last year it really messed with the fish. So, uh, it, it, But there was a real buzz going around the community. There was over 100, 100, maybe 150 people showed up on Saturday for the weigh-ins, and we, there was a huge buzz that Mark was in uh, the lead, Mark Pilgrim, uh, hoping that maybe the local boy would bring home the championship. So Sunday happens. Uh, kickoff, the 10 was much easier. Got to float out and be with the National Anthem crew that day. But I had some live uh, video feed problems, so I didn't get, get to do that. But the guys at the camera crew, they said, hey, why don't you come out and film with us today? Which I thought, that's cool. I'm going to be out with a film crew, going to follow these guys around the boat. So it's been about, let's see, from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the water, following these fishermen around. And Lake Almanor was not being nice. Lake Almanor and the bass fish were going, no, nah, we don't care how good you are. Uh, we're we're going to go into hiding with these fish. And it was amazing to see these professionals struggle a little bit, right? They, they, you know, fish that they'd seen the day before were gone. Uh, fish that they could see, they could literally see in the water, weren't taking their baits. Uh, they were just trying all these different techniques. You know, we first followed Ish Monroe for about a half hour, didn't catch anything. He was frustrated with one fish. He just couldn't get him to look at stuff. Uh, we followed Jake Boomer for a little bit. We followed uh, Nicholas Clowder for a little bit. Zach Thompson, we finally find Zach Thompson. He caught, caught a fish wire with him over in some docks. Uh, but we just kept on bouncing around. We got behind Col- uh, uh, Colby uh, Pearson uh, for a little bit. So we, we got some great photos. We saw some great actions. But we saw so many different techniques, right? Some guys, they're called bed fishing. They're, they're, they literally are spotting their beds and just throwing the, the bait right at the beds and, and catching fish. Other one guys were just literally spot fishing. They were just, you know, trolling around the water, looking for them in the water. The water's clear enough for their glasses, throwing the bait at them. Uh, and and then we ran into uh, Colby Pearson. I want to talk about him real quick, okay? Um, and spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you, he won the event, okay? But he he's the first two-time winner of the BAM Trail. Uh, he won the first event at Lake Martinez in Arizona. And he started the day in fifth place. Actually, I'll be honest with you. Everybody started the day at zero because on the last day they all start from grassroots. But 
this guy was doing something completely different than everybody else. I don't even want to give away secrets online because I, you know, everybody will find out. Let me just say, if if the average person was using an eight pound liter, he was using half. Uh, if the average person was using some, you know, super expensive lure from their sponsors, he had something that he was making up with his teeth and tying things on almost like a fly person would uh, with some kind of thing he had made up that he had homemade. And if everybody else was, you know, in eight foot of water doing the beds, he was in 12 to 10 feet of water, just a little bit further out in a second layer. And he was nailing them, pulling them in. We got, we got, we, we got him catching a couple while we were there. And he thought out told us, he says, no one else does what I do. And it's interesting that he's won both tournaments. Cause I'd like to know if he did it in Arizona as well, because the man brought in a little over 16 and a half pounds of fish the last day for his five fish. Cause the last day, they only count the five, the five best fish they have of the day. And uh, he uh, eked out Ish Monroe who got second uh, with 16 pounds even. Uh, and then Mark uh, Pilgrim actually got, came in fourth. So he came in with 15 and a half pounds. Uh, so one pound different really, between champion and fourth place uh, and that, you know, that whatever that money, you know, difference is between the two. I didn't, I didn't get all the scales down, but it was such an exciting event. There's probably almost 200 people that showed up for the final. Obviously Mark had a huge audience there, but all the families from all over the place drove in with their kids and they they're playing in the water, but they're all so excited for this thing because in the end, there's just a five, five tournament fishing uh, tour, six, I mean, six, I mean, six, and someone's walking home with a free boat in a car, a truck, man. There, it's a big deal. Plus all the checks that they're getting, right? And this is about sponsorship, and it's about these guys doing what they're good at. But I'm telling you, these guys are exceptional. Uh, the, the the technique and what they're doing, and how much time they spend in the water is really cool to go. And I was really privileged to have that much access to the show this weekend. So a little bit more write-up for CRRigmagazine.com. I hope you look at it. But more than just go to Bass Angler Magazine or the BAM Trail if you're into fishing. Take a look at these guys. They treated the lake with uh, the utmost respect. They really did. Every night they take the fish back out. They, they, these live wells keep the fish alive, so they put the, life, the, the fish right back in the lake. Um, and they make a big deal. Like a, I talked to one fisherman that actually one fish did die, and they took it so hard. It was like, man, I lost one today. I just he hated it. It's like they really try to just keep putting it back. They don't want to destroy the, the environment. They try to be respectful of everybody. And the community of Chester and Lake Almanor, rock stars they treated those guys with just great hospitality saying hi guys that were you know private piers and docks hey you can fish my pier anytime I had a funny story we're following one of the uh, I, I, i'm it may have been jake boomer i could be wrong on this person so I won't, I won't i won't say it we're we're following this boat right and he's fishing this one set of water and he's doing okay and uh there's these two fishermen in a boat just on the shoreline, just ahead of them. And we're kind of following them down the, down the shoreline. And uh, we started to get pretty close to them. And they finally say, hey, you can fish right in front of us, no problem at all. I thought, oh, that was really kind of kind of, you know, taking bass water. These guys are actually taking their bass out of the lake, right? Well, long story short, about a few minutes later, realized that these two guys were in a boat that they they met. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was, it was Boomer. But uh, they met the professional fishermen on Thursday in town at the grocery store. And we're talking about this boat they wanted to buy. And he recommended, hey, you should buy that boat. It's a good deal. So they bought the boat, and they're on the lake in that boat fishing the same hole he is. He catches a bass right in front of him. And no kidding, man. It was the greatest story. These guys have been fishing. But here's the pro comes along. He told them to buy the boat. They're out using it. And you know, he comes out right in front of him and catches a bass right in front of him. It was, it was, it couldn't have been written any better. It was a great story. So, but these guys were having a ball. I think they were from Lake Orville Club or whatever it was. So, uh, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, great event. And uh, I, I can't say enough about it. I hope I get to do another one. Their next event is the Columbia's Gorge, which is kind of up in you know my home where I grew up at. So they'll be up in Columbia Gorge here later this summer for the next event. Uh, and then they have a, an Orville uh, Lake one coming up and they'll be back in the Delta for the, for the championship. So that's kind of the, the BAM, the BAM trail. So hey, I'm already running on my 30 minutes. I'm going to run five minutes long here. Hold on. Can I got another adventure? I want to tell you about, we're going to switch gears off of Lake Almanor. Promise you. If you want to go to Lake Almanor, have a summer vacation, St. Bernard's lodge is my base camp. When I go to St. Bernard uh, to up in that area, uh, Sharon Roberts, there is a phenomenal lady. She's like a chamber of commerce person that owns a hotel. She knows every place to go. 
great trails. Lassen is not open yet. The road's probably another week still until it's fully open. They still had like four feet of snow up on uh, Helen Lake, right? So lots of snow up high still. And uh, so, but uh, the Lake Almanor, Lassen area, St. Bernard's is about uh, six, seven miles out of, out of Chester. Um, but it's, you know, in between Chester and Lake Alma, uh, or Lassen Volcanic National Park's uh, south side. So I love staying there. It is a European style lodge, has seven rooms, um, I think it's seven rooms, uh, and it's European bathroom style. So shared bathroom upstairs, but they got a bar, restaurant, everything for guests. So uh, give them a call. I highly recommend St. Bernard's Lodge. I stay with them all the time. I'm sure there's other great places in the area too, but St. Bernard's is my choice there. So a shout out to them. All right, let me switch gears real quick so we, I don't lose you guys. I want to take this other other story. Uh, the week be, uh, weekend before I went to Lassen, I have been told by more than one person, let's just say it that way, that of all my adventure places, uh, one place I've missed is Pinecrest Lake. And specifically, Pinecrest Lake, go see Cleo's bath. That's what they tell me, right? And so we took off Memorial Day weekend, me and my buddy Tom and his son who was in town, uh, and we did that. To, we did went over Snower Pass, which is open. Uh, there's lots of snow on Snower Pass. So on the way over, we stopped to pictures of waterfalls, and th- there's water flowing everywhere. Just beautiful up there. If you haven't done Snower Pass 108, gone over in the snow, go now because it's really pretty. Uh, all the rock, snow melt, the rivers everywhere. Long story short, though, we you know make it to Pinecrest. It was a little over two and a half hour drive for us. Um, I've never been there before. Um, didn't really tell me camping in cabin communities or where it looks like a great place to, to stay. Um, but we were there with a mission. Our mission was to hike around the lake and get to Cleo's bath as well. And then come back around the other side of the lake uh, in this hot, warm Memorial Day uh, event that we were on. So uh, we got there. Beaches were full of people, kids fishing. I didn't realize how much of a fishery it was. So literally every 10 feet for the first two miles, there's somebody fishing. There, and we saw people catch them right off the shoreline. So there's just fishing poles everywhere. But we followed this nice little uh, um, uh, scenic trail. It's actually registered as a, one of the um, uh, national trails uh, around the lake. And it's kind of got paved in mud and dirt and logs, so it's got a lot to up and down to the shorelines. Followed around. And then Cleo's Bath, at the back side of the lake, I guess it would be the east side of the lake, takes off up the mountain. And Cleo's Bath is a beautiful hut, right? It, it's, it's literally flat for... I'd probably say one and a half miles. Um, you follow the river. Uh, I wouldn't say, I guess it's not flat. I guess it's a little up and down. It's just like, just like we're walking the rest of the path. You're going up 15 feet, down 15 feet. There's a little inlets coming the river. River's super calm. You think, well, how, how can this be this big river? It's got this super calm st- stretch that you're going to walk by. And then you come to this massive waterfall. Uh, and if that was the only thing you're hiking to, you're done. This is beautiful. This is a gorgeous you know, cascade waterfall with massive granite boulders in it reminds you very much of a Yosemite waterfall with the granite. So, I mean, this waterfall is coming straight out of immigrant wilderness down to the pine crest. It's got this granite Canyon that's, that's shooting up on both sides. It's a beautiful area, big old pond. I imagine late in the summer, the people can swim down there. It's probably a little safe and stuff, but right now it's raging. So it was really cool. But then from there, the Cleo's bath hike becomes a little extreme. Okay. I'm just going to be called out. One is, Kind of hard to, to see the trail. You kind of have to look behind you a little bit. It's like right over here. Um, and then you're going to go up only a couple hundred yards. You can see a little cave. And, you know, you start to see the trail is really just kind of following the grooves of the rocks. It's not really a trail anymore. You're just kind of climbing granite. And eventually you're going to get to a spot where you're going to look around and go, I don't know where it's going besides up, up in these rocks. And you start to do some class two rock climbing, you know, and it, People, unfortunately, have taken blue paint and made little blue dots to follow, um, which I hate. But in this case, it helped. It helped me know which direction I was going and where I wasn't supposed to be. I hate it. I wish people wouldn't do it. Just let us figure it out. Um, But that helped. And you do kind of follow this course. But you're going to be walking up some rocks where I'm six foot three. And I had to use my hands and my legs in a weird position to get myself up on these rocks. Then hop on rock between rocks and trees. And there's a path there. It's pretty easy to see once you kind of get on it, but you're going to go up straight up 500 feet in in less than a couple hundred yards, basically, and and you know get up there. But once you reach the top, there it is. It's just right below you. Cleo's bath is a bunch of uh, cascades that break into these pools, right? And the main one, and right at the right at the top of the waterfall, there's massive pool. The cascade comes in. 
uh, there's little teeny grooves where like hot tubs, I would call them hot tubs or cold tubs, where the water settled, where you can get inside, probably up your shoulder almost right now. Um, I hopped over the next cliff. There's a bunch of people down there. So I climbed over the next one, had a whole whole bath to myself. It was very cold. We did jump in. Uh, it was nice cool down before heading back. Uh, but we really did think Cleo's bath was a special event. I'm glad people have told me to go there. I uh, highly would recommend it. I would just warn people, it's not for everybody. That cl- that last climb up and the raw scramble, it you know, you need to have some flexibility. You need to have the ability to climb up without hurting yourself. I saw one group, matter of fact, they were right there. And they were sitting there and they go, we're not doing it. We're not going up. And I didn't blame them at all. It was a little st- extreme. Um, but if you're used to jumping off trail or, or climbing rocks, you know, the young man that I took with me, he was having a ball. He's a young 25-year-old, lots of power and flexibility in his legs. And he was just bounding and popping over everything. So, you know, again, you know, just judge your own, own creativity. Again, if you walk nothing back just to the base of the waterfall, I promise you right now the waterfall is just as beautiful and, and pretty exciting. So, Hey guys, I'm 35 minutes in. I promise you guys 30 minute show, so I'm a little late uh, running here. So I'm gonna go in in this week. I have a lot to share, obviously. Um, so I hope the Sierra is in your future. Get to the Sierra this summer. Enjoy. Uh, there are events in Lake Tahoe coming up this weekend. There's events uh, all over the place. Mammoth Tahoe, Lake Almanor. Uh Find your favorite lake community. Uh, get up in the mountains. Go explore. We are heading out in two weeks to Sequoia National Park for my first ever backpacking experience with Sequoia. So we're going to do a backpacking loop up there. Hopefully the snow melts because I heard there's still a lot of snow. So we're going to see if we can get that done, but we'll bring that to you later this summer. And I do believe next week I'll have a guest from the Kern River uh, uh, Conservancy on, on next week. So join us next week for that. Other than that, go explore, discover more Sierra. We hope the Sierra's in your future, and we hope you have a wonderful day wherever you're at. God bless.